Dan King, uh, part of the board of the Clean Tax, and I'm here today interviewing Ryan Edwards, who is the chair of the board of directors of Clean Tax and also works at Sun Power Corporation. So I'm super excited to talk with him today uh, about the solar industry. So thanks for making time. Thank you very much for having me. So tell us, what what, is, what do you do for Sun Power Corporation? So Sun Power Corporation, it's a solar panel company. We have our headquarters in California. Okay and we have a, a domain office in Austin and so that's where we have about 200 headcount and where our SunPower Capital Services business is located. So SunPower Capital mm -hmm. is the, uh, the financial part of SunPower Corporation but focused on lease business. Okay. So there are different loan products out there, um, sorry, loan, cash and lease products out there for residential customers. And so somebody to manage the lease side of it mm -hmm. uh, looks to SunPower Capital to manage that for SunPower Corporation. Okay, SunPower Capital helping with leasing then mm -hmm. for residential. So, so what are the different verticals that exist within the solar industry that we can share with our audience? Yeah, so, so solar companies, they can specialize in either commercial, power plant, and residential. And okay. so... They all have different benefits. They all look at different uh, uh, financing structures. And within each of them, they all have, uh, we'll say, different financials that they're looking for to meet what the investors are looking for, as okay. well as the customers or the off takers. Okay. So, again, power plant, which is mm -hmm. the same as utility, commercial, mm -hmm. and residential, which is distributed generation. Okay, excellent. And so, uh, within residential lease finance, how is the lease product? You know, really impacting solar adoption overall in the industry. Yeah, so this was a really cool part about when I joined SunPower was that I did not know that we leased products. Mm -hmm. um, and I've only been with the company I didn't for two either. years. I didn't know that this whole leasing uh, was a big aspect of solar. Definitely. In general. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's a really good value proposition. Okay. Um, so I mentioned that you can either pay cash for a system, which could cost about $40,000, or a loan, same cost. Is this for a house or? For, yes, for okay. a house. Okay. Um, and I mean, there are community solar, other aspects mm -hmm. out there, but we'll just focus on uh, an individual, like a single home. And so cash, loan, and then we have the lease product, which is actually cheaper um, because the homeowner doesn't actually own the system. Oh, okay. Mostly because they, ah, okay. they don't have an interest it's in- It's like leasing a car. Precisely. Okay. So That's you can choose sense. that. Hey, I'm going to loan. I'm going to take out a big, you know, loan, five-year loan to own that BMW, or I'm going to lease out that loan, turn it in after you know three years because I don't really care about the ownership. I just want the maintenance part of it. Or get the it. newest, latest model in three exactly. years. Exactly. You can have okay. the good stuff all the time. Okay. Okay. Excellent. And so you know, I've heard of several different incentives uh, around the solar industry. Can you explain a few of the, the big ones? Yeah, so uh, the investment tax credit, ITC, that's the probably one of the biggest accelerators over the past decade, for sure. And that's a, uh, you know, you invest, um, you know, for every dollar you put into buying a system as the mm -hmm. owner, you receive the tax credit, which is 30% of that dollar that you put in. Okay, so, so you get 30% back. Yeah, so you can file that on your federal taxes. Okay. Say, all right, I invested you know hundred thousand dollars into putting a solar system on my own roof, and um, I get thirty thousand dollars back. Okay, so um, you really spend seventy thousand dollars in the end. Yeah, it, okay. it's it's extended over. Uh, it can be extended over multiple tax years. Okay. Um, but that's just simply put how it's uh, how it's utilized. And does that apply with the leasing as well? Yes. Okay. So that's where the ownership structure is very important. So okay. When I'm leasing a system, I'm, you know, Joe Schmo, uh, cust a single home, buy home mm -hmm. owner, and I'm looking to uh, buy a system, again, do I have $40,000 to pay outright cash or take out a loan that I want to have, you know, 300 a month? Not really, because my utility bill is only 150 bucks a month. Right, so, so the payback isn't there. So, that, okay. so it's, it's, uh, that's where it's more like, all right, I really want the, the tax incentives or whatever else behind it. Mm -hmm. But when I lease, I'm looking at. Uh, I don't care about home. I don't care about the ownership of the system. I just want something that's going to actually beat my utility bill. I'll have to pay a little bit of my utility bill, but mm -hmm. we'll say 90% of the production that I receive from the solar system mm -hmm. is covered, okay. and that's cheaper than my $150 utility bill. Okay. So simply put, buy a, buy a system or I lease a system. Maybe I'll have $120 monthly lease payment. 
um, with an with an escalator on it just to cover, we'll say, inflation. Mm -hmm. And then maybe I'll have only another ten dollars in utility bill, wow. so I pay a hundred thirty bucks a month instead of one hundred fifty. And you're doing something that's great for the planet. Exactly. Okay, excellent. So that's helpful. Are there any other incentives that people should know about? Yeah. So I should. So we have the investment tax credit, mm -hmm. which is going away. Uh, it'll be zero uh, percent by the time we get to twenty twenty two. Um, okay. Ten percent on power plant and utility. Okay. Um, so that's where other incentives need to come in, and I'm a big advocate for these performance-based incentives, rebates. Um, and uh, state renewable energy credits, okay. um, where we actually can receive, based on performance, a certain credit back. So let me let me walk through each one of those real quick. So the SREC, state Re renewable energy credit, okay, that is based on one megawatt hour of production from my you know, residential home. Maybe I get four four of those a year, something like that. Depending, it depends on the size of the system. I receive a credit for that. Well, what does okay. that credit really do? Mm -hmm. So when we have companies like BP or ExxonMobil, um, they're challenged by, uh, we'll say the federal government, where, all right, well, if you're gonna emit this much greenhouse gas, mm -hmm. then you need to have a certain offset from renewable energy sources. So they're incented then to buy credits from renewable, gener renewable energy companies, customers that have received these SRECs. Okay, so renewable energy, state renewable energy credits. Precisely. And so the customer gets that credit. It'll be whoever the owner of the, the product is. Okay. So if it's a lease, it'll be the investors. Okay. Um, or else if it's a loan or cash product, it'll be that actual customer. Okay. And either way, it helps, it helps whether it's making it a lower price for the person you're selling it to yeah, or for the owner that's buying it. Yeah, just think okay. about, um, you know, I'm turning energy into some cash I can put in my pocket mm -hmm. after I bought the system. Okay. Um, so that was SREX and then mm -hmm. performance-based incentive, PBI. So that's very similar to SREX in that it's based on the production where I actually receive cash for that okay. instead of a credit. Okay, gotcha. And then a rebate, just like you know, you go to Costco and buy something, they give you a $40 rebate, either instant or later on, mm -hmm. we get rebates for, for um, PV systems as well. So lots of different options, and those will keep going on for a little bit longer? Or they yes. just vary over time? They it's, just... all, it's all really uh, dependent on the state. Okay. So um, all of our uh, dealers that we work with are you know, spread amongst the United States, mm -hmm. and they're, they're charged to you know, uh, understand what the, you know, the PV uh, incentives are for that state. And we're also okay. there to, to kind of check on them as well to make sure that we're maximizing those uh, incentives. And so as we, as the market continues to evolve, ITC going away, so hopefully, and this is when we talk, talk about it ITC investment tax credit. Yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> so as you know, ITC goes away, mm -hmm. we have more of these renewable energy credits that come, become more prevalent because okay. you really think about it. I want to have a really good quality system that's mm -hmm. going to last a long time. And so, for instance, SunPower, you know, it's kind of like the Apple product of PV because okay. The product is really well. Oh, photo, photo yeah. yeah, photovoltaic. PV. Can we say yeah, <laughs> photovoltaic? So you're saying PV. You're talking about photovoltaic. Yes, thank you for. So uh, okay, so you're saying Sun Power is like the Apple. Yeah, they're like the Apple product when it comes to PV or from solar panel com solar panels. Okay. And so, okay. Uh, that, what that means is yes, you pay a premium on it, but it's going to last a long time, and. We estimate, you know, a lot less degradation over the life of a system, which is 20 years okay. at least. Um, so it's going to last a long time, produce a lot of energy, and it's very efficient. It's mm -hmm. slightly more efficient than our competitors, and because of that, you don't have to do as much maintenance, replacing inverters, whatever the, the normal. So the lower cost is. I mean, there is a lower cost in a way over time because it's higher quality. Yes. Okay. And lower so, maintenance as well. Yeah, and so on these, you know, performance-based incentives, mm -hmm. if it lasts a long time. Mm -hmm produces energy very efficiently, relative competitors, and, um, you're, and you're looking at, okay, well, I'm trying to offset what all of my utility providers are, are really needing for energy requirements. Um, they'll find that, well, actually, you know, solar is pretty cheap relative to some of these other um, means to produce energy. Interesting, okay. And so what, you know, speaking of, of you know, the tax credits and some of the ways to incentivize, what are now uh, some of the challenges that the solar industry is facing? 
Yeah, so yeah, ITC definitely is prevalent, so mm -hmm. that's gonna force a lot of adaptation for companies. Potentially consolidation as well, because if their fixed costs are high enough, then they may not have a plan in place. Um, so I will say most are adapting and planning for what's gonna happen, um, and that's where, you know, when it comes to like a lease structure, mm -hmm. we have to start getting a lot more creative, start financing these SRECs or PBI or whatever we can so that we can get more cash up front to cover these fixed costs um, related to, to whatever the market's going to throw at us. Okay. Um, and some of the other challenges, you know, the tariffs that we've heard about, um, those do impact how we're going to, um, you know, a lot of production is overseas because mm -hmm. it's just generally cheaper. Um, we're a lot more services based, especially, you know, Sun Power, for instance, is a lot more services based within the United States. Okay. So naturally tariffs are going to increase your costs. So that's where it's, you know, we hope that the purpose of tariffs is not just a trade war, it's that we're going to get better, better deals in the long run, so mm -hmm. they're going to sell more overseas, whatever it is. Um, and that's what we're very, uh, we're very bullish on how the, the market's going to kind of move beyond tariffs, bring in more uh, incentives, okay. and those together will continue to help the, the solar panel industry uh, not only evolve, but prosper. And so you're optimistic, Very. despite these you know, changes and some of the barriers that you see to adoption um, or to accelerating the adoption, what are some of the solutions that you see to some of these barriers, like the tax credits going away or tariffs happening? What are some of the solutions for companies, for the industry, and also for potentially residential customers, for example? Yeah, so mentioned all the incentives. Um, we gotta, we, if we're not gonna get the support from the federal government, um, which nor, nor am I expecting, um, that's where we want the state and local governments to look at, all right, well, what are the types of jobs we have in this market? Okay, mm -hmm. so they're based on you know, solar, wind, whatever it is. Let's create more incentives for, if you have really good performance from your product, because you have a really good quality product, then let's build more of those credits. Let's, let's really grasp that market of SREC, um, generation and you know buying and selling because it really is as simple as supply and demand. Okay. Great. So, what are are there any other solutions to barriers you're seeing in the solar industry? Yeah. So that's where I believe we need to, as a nation, mm -hmm. embrace the 21st century economy. And what I mean by that is understand that because it is very cheap to manufacture overseas mm -hmm. um, and more emphasis on services in the United States, where we train our workforce, we we, in, we actually set aside um, you know, funds to educate and train, such as uh, some of the things we're doing in Texas include uh, grants for companies to kind of partner with colleges to train veterans on how okay. to uh, you know, run maintenance on a wind farm. Excellent. So, so training programs for folks like veterans, grants to pay for those, okay? Precisely. Excellent. Um, and you know, as more Again, those are more at the local state level um, where they're understanding, well, this is what we really have the, these are the most um, products that really succeed in our, in our state. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have so much sunshine here or a lot of wind. We do, we have a lot of sunshine. You can see it outside. Yeah. You even see some solar panels yeah. there behind us. Yes. And so, you know, once it's knowing your, your state better and the, the market of, you know, both job uh, seekers and folks that are you know coming out of the military for instance um, you know I'm a veteran myself and get, getting trained up so that you understand um, you know really where you're you can benefit the you know the nation as a whole your local economy um, as a you know uh, educated uh, maintenance provider as well as you know coming to you know the finance side mm -hmm. um, you know when you're networking and speaking with uh, folks at, at certain events, try and learn more about, okay, well, what are some of the, the uh, intricate parts of lease finance? Mm -hmm. So that as I, um, you know, say go through an MBA program or go through an undergraduate program, you're trying to expand on that knowledge while you're in classrooms. And be a part of something that's actually gonna be in the future as well, yes. growing. And so, speaking of Texas, you know, how does the solar industry um, in Texas compare to the rest of the country? Uh, I would say Texas is definitely at the forefront when it comes to how we're utilizing it within the grid. Okay. So Cleantech's actually uh, helped promote a uh, white paper 
back in uh, January is when we kind of launched, and it was our Double for Nothing series, but it discussed ERCOT, which is um, essentially our, our utility. Um, and ERCOT stands for the Electric Reliability Council of Texas. Terrific. <laughs> so ERCOT is kind of like, I mean, really it owns most of Texas in terms of uh, managing uh, power plants. And so it's, it's kind of shaping the model for how, um, how we can utilize renewables. If you think about it this way, um, when I'm going to plan how much power is coming into a, a utility from, uh, from a renewable source such as solar or wind, mm -hmm. um, or hydro or geothermal, whatever it is, um, I need to also be able to kind of forecast what that's gonna be so I don't take in too much or take in too little and I can't meet demand. Because it's pretty easy for a utility provider to understand what the demand is from you know, how many consumers are turning their lights on, so mm -hmm. to speak. But it's kind of hard to project how much, a, how much wind is going to blow on a given day. Sure. Especially if a forecast is only updated once a year or every other year or something like that. Sure. So what ERCOT did was they moved to a more nodal um, format where throughout, spread throughout the, the you know, ERCOT landscape, they actually update their forecast for wind and what the sun's going to be that day every 15 minutes. Oh, wow. So with so that... From one from one, one year to to one every minutes. yeah once every two years or every fifteen minutes yeah so if you wow. if you can then update your forecast that frequently then I know exactly we'll say plus or minus you know a few uh, megawatt hours mm -hmm. what the production is going to be mm -hmm. for any of those renewable sources wow. which in the long run again we as we already discussed you know it's going to be cheaper um, so now I can push more of these cheaper um, per per megawatt hour products and use that to save money for all my consumers. Great, we like that. Definitely. We all wanna save some money, absolutely. And um, some of the other great uh, things that um, some of the other states are doing that can kind of push over to some other uh, states like Texas, you know, uh, California has signed on for all these new homes have to have solar panels, essentially. And so that in itself is kind of forcing demand um, for these products, and yes, That's great for the solar industry. <laughs> great for the solar industry, yes, it does increase the the price of housing, but also supplies are going to meet that eventually, and so prices should stay reasonable and come down eventually. Um, but as you create more demand um, for distributed generation, so you're mm -hmm. not so dependent upon the utilities just to create power for your local mm -hmm. area, um, that would be a terrific means to keep keep our earth green, our skies blue. Uh, this, and the sun shining. That sounds great. Sounds great to me. And so one last question for you. Um, what vertical do you see, you know, you mentioned the, some of the different verticals within the solar industry, like residential, commercial, utility. Yeah. Uh, which one do you see growing the fastest? Uh, I might have a little bias here, but I will say I think the, the residential space is really, really um, blowing up because uh, when you really think about it, it's kind of easier to, to install, we'll say, um, uh, an eight kilowatt system, which is maybe you know anywhere between twenty and forty panels, depends on the, the manufacturer. But uh, that versus a large commercial or power plant space, um, where the economics are a little bit more challenging, financing mm -hmm. structures a bit more complex. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel that residential is really going the right direction in terms of getting volume of product out there, as well as getting a lot of happy customers saving money on their utility bills. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, the, it's, it's easier to scale when you're doing a lot of smaller projects versus a couple of really massive ones. Yes. So it definitely helps accelerate adoption. Well, I can't thank you enough. Is there anything I might have missed or anything else you want to mention about the solar industry that we didn't get to touch on? No, I think that's that's covered at least the grasp of it. But if, uh, if you are interested in learning more about the solar industry, um, I can only speak from my from personal perspective, but um, I'm always happy to uh, to share more information on a, a individual or another group forum. Um, and as the board chair for Clean Techs, uh, you can contact me at Ryan at CleanTechs.org. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. Look forward to the next interview. And uh, of course, let us know if you have any questions and want to know more about the solar industry. You can reach out to Ryan at Ryan at CleanTechs.org. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.